I had this kind of cool idea, okay? We all know about superfoods and I don't know, they're overpublished and talked about too much, but what about high fat superfoods? I figured if I came up with seven different high fat superfoods and I talked about these high fat superfoods in separate videos, it could instill in you to really just start implementing these into your diet a lot more if you're doing a low carb, high fat, or keto diet. These high fat superfoods are many foods that you can just add in throughout the course of the day. So you'll see over the coming months, I'll be talking about these high fat superfoods in different contexts. But anyway, today it's all about the high fat superfood we call macadamia nuts. Now, this isn't gonna be some boring video talking about the basic macronutrient profiles. If you've watched my videos before, then you know that's just not my style, okay? I'm all about the science, I'm all about going deep, and I'm all about the biochem and what happens when you eat this stuff. So without further ado, let's break this down. Let's talk about the almighty macadamia nut. Hey, I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button, and then please do hit that bell icon. That way you never ever miss a beat whenever we post daily videos. And the reason that I'm doing these high fat superfood videos is because they make sense along with a Mediterranean keto cookbook that I'm coming out with. Now this isn't an ebook, this isn't anything like that. It's a real book that's coming out in the near future. So it's gonna be including a lot of these high fat superfoods and a lot of the recipes and things like that. So make sure you're staying tuned for that stuff. All right. Let's talk macadamia nuts. First thing we need to talk about, just something super simple, and you're probably gonna turn off the video because you're thinking this is so basic, lowest carbohydrate nut. All right, yeah, perfect. Okay, if you're doing keto, it's the lowest carbohydrate nut. We're talking one gram of net carb for a 200 calorie serving. It just doesn't get any better than that, but let's just get that out of the way. Now let's talk about what the real stuff we wanna hear is, which is the nerdy stuff, phytic acid. Okay, phytic acid is something that prevents the absorption of minerals. It's in plants and it prevents that absorption. So think of it like this. Imagine you ate something that had a bunch of magnesium in it. Well, imagine that there was a lot of phytic acid. That phytic acid would chelate. It would bind to that magnesium and make it indigestible. Okay, now most nuts have a lot of phytic acid in them. They just do. So if you were to eat a bunch of nuts, not only is it going to cancel out a lot of the minerals that you would get from the nut itself, it has a carryover effect where it cancels out the minerals and the nutrients that you get from some of the other foods that you eat. So hypothetically, if you ate a bunch of almonds or cashews, which by the way, have 600 milligrams of phytic acid per ounce, you could in theory be inhibiting or prohibiting yourself from utilizing nutrients and minerals from the salad you just ate along with it. It's serious business, so you have to pay attention to that. Turns out that macadamia nuts are the only nut that has a virtually non-detectable level of phytic acid. This is huge and hugely, hugely important. Okay, now let's move into the omega-6, omega-3 thing. I see way too many people focusing on the amount of omega-3s that are in a nut. Do not worry about it too much. Okay, yes, to some degree it's cool, but if you're going to tout the omega-3 benefit of a nut or a seed, you better at least showcase what the omega-6 profile is. Because let me explain something. If you have high omega-3s in a nut, which is gonna be like a few percent, there's a good chance it's got so many omega-6s that it's gonna cancel that out. Now, in case you didn't know or don't remember from one of my previous videos, omega-6s trigger inflammation within the body. They cascade that result where you can have more inflammation. Well, macadamia nuts only have 2% omega-6s. That is not much at all. When you look at something like walnuts, walnuts have 53% omega-6. Funny enough, walnuts also have a lot, of, oh, a lot of omega-3s. But if you were to eat a ton of walnuts, you're gonna have much more of a result from the omega-6s than you would the omega-3s. So if you're eating a bunch of nuts, you're throwing yourself out of balance by loading up on omega-6s. So at least if you're eating macadamia nuts, you don't throw off that balance. Now let me put something into perspective here for a second. You're doing keto, you're doing low carb. Well, compare that to someone that's not doing keto or low carb. They consume a small amount of nuts and that's good for them. You're doing keto, so you consume a bunch of nuts because you need more fat. Well, the impact of the omega-6s from the nuts on you is going to be much more than the impact on someone that's not doing keto. So it's much more important to you to pay attention to the amount of omega-6s that are in a nut than anybody else. So macadamia nuts all the way. Now we jump into a little bit of fatty acid education talking about monounsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats are a stable, non-saturated fat. So when you look at stability, you look at how they chemically and mechanically can break down. Okay, a polyunsaturated fat has multiple poly non-saturated bonds, which means it's not very stable. They can be good fats, but they break down and they oxidize and they turn toxic in your body easily. Saturated fats come with their own list of problems. Monounsaturated fats are kind of a balance in between that provide us with a lot of ability to increase HDL and lower LDL. 
Now, macadamia nuts are 80% monounsaturated fat. That's not really triggering anything with you right now, right? Well, let me put it this way. Extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil, which are the, supposedly the healthiest oils, are only 70% monounsaturated fat. So opt for the macadamia nut oil or eat the macadamia nuts whenever you can. Now, they don't have the antioxidant profiles that you're gonna get with like extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil, but when it comes down to just a satiating tasty fat, you're not going to get any better than macadamia nuts there. The next piece is the part that I'm really the most excited about, truly. Okay, it's palmitoleic acid and there's earth shattering science surrounding this stuff. It's a unique fat known as an omega-7 and it virtually has its own hormone-like properties. It acts as a hormone within the body and I'm gonna talk about this in a second. By the way, if you're looking for different macadamia nut kind of foods and macadamia nut oils, macadamia nut butters, Highly recommend you check out Thrive Market down below. You probably watch my channel and you probably know the way that I talk about Thrive, but they're a huge supporter of this channel, huge sponsor. They make a lot of these videos possible. If it wasn't for them, so much of this content wouldn't be possible, but they're an online membership-based grocery store that delivers groceries right to your doorstep. So when you're looking for food, you don't wanna to go to the grocery store, check them out. But also I've been able to create keto boxes, fasting boxes. So it's like you're able to go grocery shopping with me where I'm able to put what I would recommend into a specific bundle. So there's a link down below so that you can check it out. Highly, highly recommend. And truthfully, it's probably the best way that you can support this channel and give back is by checking them out. All right, palmitoleic acid. So the first thing at a genetic level, we're looking at inflammation, right? Nuclear factor kappa B is something that triggers inflammation within the body. It's at the genetic level. Palmitoleic acid has been demonstrated to quell inflammation by inhibiting nuclear factor kappa B. So that means the, the general of the inflammation army or the political agenda behind the inflammation army in our body actually gets inhibited. You strike down the meeting that would normally cause a bunch of inflammation in your body. This may not sound like that interesting to you now, but if you ever get sick, this is hugely interesting. Now, the Journal of Clinical Lipidology published a cool study, took a look at one month of palmitoleic acid supplementation. Now, what they found is when subjects went on palmitoleic acid supplementation for a month, they had lower levels of triglycerides, lower levels of LDL, increased levels of HDL, which is awesome, but even more powerful than that, they had a 44% reduction in C-reactive protein levels. C-reactive protein is the main, uh, what we would normally test to see inflammation. 44% reduction, it's not saying it's a miracle and that you're going to magically have that reduction in inflammation, but across the board with this particular study, that's what we saw. But then we have to take it a step further and we have to look at food, appetite, things like that. Well, it just so happens the journal Appetite published a study that demonstrated that palmitoleic acid, again, this omega-7 that we see in macadamia nuts, ends up increasing what is called cholecystokinin, which communicates with the hypothalamus to tell you to essentially stop eating. It's a hormone that's released when food drops into the small intestine, which normally sends a signal, says, hey, this person is done eating. Just chill out, put the fork down. But the biggest piece that we have to talk about here is the hormone piece. And I'm just hoping that you've stuck with me throughout this video because this is the coolest piece. Turns out that it has super hormone-like properties. It is known as a lipokine. Okay, now the journal Cell, there's this really cool landmark study, and it demonstrated that palmitoleic acid inhibits de novo lipogenesis. What does that mean? De novo lipogenesis is where your body takes extra carbohydrates or fructose from fruit and turns it into fat at the level of the liver. So when you overeat carbohydrates, a lot of times what will happen is the carbs will get used, but then any excess will go through de novo lipogenesis. Carbs getting stored as fat it stands for new fat. De novo lipogenesis, new fat creation. Turns out palmitoleic acid slows down that process. Now it gets better. If you're looking to restore muscle glycogen after a workout, and if you're a super nerd and you're like me and you work out and you do keto and you want to figure out how to be able to absorb more carbohydrates into the muscle afterwards, well, having a little bit of palmitoleic acid from macadamia throughout the day can potentially increase insulin sensitivity at the musculoskeletal level, meaning that your insulin sensitivity is going to increase at the muscle level so that carbohydrates you do consume, even if it's just a small amount, get into the muscle and not to the liver. We want them to go to the muscles so that they actually restore glycogen and we can potentially build more muscle and get stronger and recover faster. If this doesn't demonstrate to you how powerful macadamia nuts are as a super fat, I don't know what will. Anyhow, seven high fat superfoods coming at you. Make sure you're keeping it locked in. Don't forget to turn on those notifications. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market down below in the description and I'll see you tomorrow.